47% are CMOs say they're going to cut costs. Cutting costs does not necessarily mean headcount. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to take that whole budget down. You are listening to CEO Perspectives, a podcast by the Conference Board. Welcome to this episode of CEO Perspectives, a signature series by the Conference Board. CEO Perspectives are conversations that take an objective, nonpartisan look at a range of subjects that matter most to business leaders. I'm Steve Odlin from the Conference Board. I'm the host of this podcast series. And in today's conversation, we're going to discuss the brand new C-suite outlook for 2024 and specifically what are CMOs thinking about and what are the marketing challenges. We've done the C-suite outlook at the Conference Board now for 25 years, and this has been a great survey that to kick off each year and frame the issues that the C-suites are dealing with each year. Joining me today to discuss the marketing communication results is Ivan Pollard, center leader of our Marketing Communications Center. Ivan, welcome. Thank you for having me, Steve. Yeah, so Ivan, just talk a little bit about the survey. I've, you know, I've said, set it up by you know, saying that there's 25 years, but it's, you know, a little bit more about the survey, the structure and so forth, and then we'll get into the marketing aspects of it. Okay, I mean, this is a, a really useful survey. As Steve said, we get, we can see patterns from year to year. Uh, we ask uh, around about 15, 16 questions that look at the external and internal factors that the C-suite and the CEO are thinking about that will impact their business, and then dive into the topics like human capital or sustainability or marketing and communications investment. AI was obviously a topic this year. And we see around the world from different companies of different sizes with different customer bases, uh, what are the commonalities and what are the differences across the C-suite and across the world as people are thinking about the year ahead? And for this one, uh, we can see, again, a lot of volatility in the year ahead, but um, you know, leading for tomorrow is the title of the uh, the C-suite outlook, and really the theme is about how you can win through all of this disruption and change. Yeah, and we've had members of the C-suite, the CEO, and his or her direct reports, and we've, uh, you know, we've well over a, a thousand people respond to this, and it uh, we have replies from around the world. So, so with that as backdrop, then let's talk a little bit about what you heard and what we saw from CMOs in this survey? CMOs are actually feeling pretty positive, Steve, because the growth and the expectations in the world through some of the disruptions coming is putting a bit of a, more of a spotlight on the marketing teams to drive, drive growth, to drive profit, to drive innovation, and to drive entry into new markets. That's very aligned with the CEO's perspective. I think where we're seeing some differences in how the CMO is, is telling us what lies ahead is in the how they're going to do it. So I love, I still go back to Drucker's quote from 50 years ago, you know, the purpose of a business is to, to win and retain a customer. And therefore, you know, two of the vital components of any business are marketing and innovation. Still stays true today. The how they're going to do it, though, is the thing that's subtly different across the C-suite. Yeah, and this is a backdrop, you know, and every year we, I suppose we say this, every year I've been in business, we've said it, but, uh, you know, you don't know what the future holds, and there's a lot of volatility in the world from geopolitics, you know, whatever's happening in the Middle East and Ukraine and the Taiwan-China uh, situation. There's volatility as it relates to economics and, you know, on and on and on. So lots of unknowns, as there are every year, and so therefore... You know, people are a little nervous. Um, you know, the conference board is still projecting a, a U.S. slowdown at least and uh, potentially a short and shallow recession as, as there will be in various places around the world. So so things are kind of slowing and people get worried when that happens. And so, you know, typically you hear at this point in time a lot about cost cutting and so forth. We didn't, you know, we heard a little bit about that. Yeah, we've got to watch our costs and so forth. But we didn't hear layoffs. We didn't hear... So we, your point was we heard more about growth and I think we've ever heard before. Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, I've been schooled by a very good CEO that growth is always something that companies are looking for and marketing is always on the front foot for that. It's not the only thing that contributes to growth, but they're the major drivers. So, yeah, we are seeing a little bit of, even though, you know, the, the top worries, the top things that will shape a business still... 
we've got, you know, over half of CEOs saying it's economic uh, downturn or recession or inflation. The CMOs are a little less worried about that than the CEOs. So, um, so for instance, if we go to uh, the real hard data, we've got 53% of CEOs saying economic downturn is the biggest factor, one of their top three factors. Only 29% of CMOs are saying the same thing. Look at inflation, 35% of uh, CEOs, only 17% are CMOs. The CMOs are very optimistic, actually, and uh, are saying, no, you know, through this, we can drive growth and uh, and the opportunities that we're starting to see come back, uh, whether it's investment or whether it's uh, new markets, whether it's innovation, those opportunities are pretty interesting for the CMO and we're hearing it. Yes, this C-suite outlook survey is telling us, but we're also seeing in, in some of the ongoing tracking we're doing just in America, the same sort of optimism about the role of marketing in driving the growth of a company. And, you know, our listeners may not all know, but, you know, you were the CMO at General Mills and before that you were at Coke. And so, you know, you've got incredible experience um, as a consumer driven CMO here. And, you know, this is the thing, you know, that, that you've lived your entire career. And the thing that I really love about CMOs, which is like, uh, all right, you know, it's going to slow it. You know, the external environment's going to do what it's going to do. It doesn't matter. We still have to take care of our customers. Yeah, looking after customers is still one of the top priorities for where uh, the CEO and the CMO will invest um, next year um, and how you manage customer experience and delight the customer. It's probably got three critical factors that everybody knows. You, you better understand who your current customer is and what they want. You better serve them for their needs better, faster, smarter and cheaper than your competition. And you better meet unmet needs that they didn't even know they had, like that lovely old Steve Jobs quote, which is, uh, you know, if you know your customer so well that you can understand what they want before they even want it, you're going to win in the business. And as you said, you know, I've been around a long time, as the gray hair can tell you. I know this is a podcast and so nobody can see it, so I can <laughs> fake it. Um, but every year, I've just come off uh, a couple of calls with CMOs where every year, we start the year saying, this is going to be a year of change, but gosh, it's a year of opportunity too. And um, the same is true this year with, yes, there's going to be volatility in the market, but inside that chaos, um, you know, lurks the opportunity to delight a customer, win a new one, use the change around us, whether it's internal or external factors to actually unleash the power of really good marketing, you know, and uh, like I said, meeting a customer's need, um, making a little bit of extra money off the stuff that you sell. It's a, a joy for every marketer in the world. Um, and one of the things that we're actually seeing is we've talked about digital transformation for 25 years now. That still is going on um, without a shadow of a doubt. But one of the interesting factoids we saw is there's a swing back versus last year for people saying, CEOs and CMOs, saying they're going to invest in advertising. Um, now, what advertising means now is very different than it meant 10 years ago. But this notion that the power of a brand, the power of an emotional tie, the power of a longer lasting relationship versus performance marketing and selling something in the moment, it's not an either or, it's an and. And that, I think, is coming back. Yeah, and it's a little bit back to basics here because, uh, you know, we got kind of waylaid with all sorts of, you know, things related to AI and yada, 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 which we'll come back to. But it still comes back to, look, if things are slow, doesn't matter. If they're fast, they're slow, you know, whatever it is, you still need to win new customers. You need to do a higher, a better job of retaining the customers and driving repeat uh, purchases from your existing customers, exciting, delighting, refreshing your brand. All of those things are just core to what marketing has been for as long as we've been alive, Ivan. And and this year is no different. It isn't. And I think it's, a, and we've been al alive for quite a long time. And by the way, may <laughs> continue that we're alive for a lot longer as well, because I'm really excited about what marketing is going to be like in the year 2075. So uh I'm sure we're going to see change every year, but you're right. I, I, as I said, it's not about the, are we swinging back towards more traditional stuff? It's the power of, you know, the, the basics and the fundamentals of brilliant marketing. Uh, how do I create and craft a product or a service that meets needs in a way that uh, will delight the customer and make them come back, but also will allow them to pay more than it costs me to make it. 
and how do I grow that? But also some of the tools that we can do to tell that story or meet that need or or even predict what's going to happen next and when somebody is going to need this. Those opportunities now to, to do the brilliant thing of the present and the future. So it, it is kind of back to the future is kind of what I think this is all about. And um, and we're about to realize the kind of the Tom Cruise minority report, future of advertising that uh, Steven Spielberg showed. And this notion of hyper-personalization that's cost-effective, I think it's about to come to life with um, with the power that AI meeting the brilliance of people, uh, creative minds and strategic minds, it can unleash a whole new uh, aspect of the way marketing is done. It won't change what marketing is. No. You know, I, I, I think back to when I started in marketing, which is well over 40 years ago, and we, you know, you had advertising, TV, radio, print. It was mo mostly national, you know, depending on what country you were in. It was mass marketing. And okay, you could do some coupons and some promotion. But basically, we sat there at that point in time. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just talk directly one on one to our customers? Mm -hmm. And one to one marketing became kind of a byword. That's where we are today. It's 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 really one to one again. And that's where we're hearing that investment still needs to be made. Yeah, we're seeing um, in the C-suite outlook, we we ask questions around AI and, and, you know, productivity and effectiveness. Sure, we've heard that for a year now. And in all of our uh, research, we're seeing that. But now uh, innovation and hyper-personalization are starting to come to the fore. And yet remember that this has to come and be cost-effective. So people will invest in this, but I think the... Um, let's say the patience period for when that return on that investment is going to show is probably shorter than uh, than maybe in the times when we started in marketing and also the imperative to prove that it's working um, and attribute, I, I did X and Y happened and the relationship between X and Y is 1 to 1.5 or whatever. Those things are actually coming a little bit and putting more pressure on the marketing team. So um Good pressure. You know, the term in marketing that, that's constantly used is, well, we need to invest, we need to invest, we need to invest. Well, if you use the term invest, you know, the best analog is in, in your own personal investing. If you put some money into this market, you don't expect that money to be dissipated. You expect to make money off of that. And I think this is this needs to be relearned over and over again because it is a, a bit of a gap still between CEOs and CFOs and CMOs, which is that, you know, a dollar spent or a euro spent, or you know, whatever currency needs to have a return that uh, that is that is at least that, and and hopefully more than that. So, the, so where are CMOs saying that the investments should be made? So CMOs are interestingly, this is one of the most interesting divergent uh, pieces of data that we saw in the C-suite outlooks. When we ask a question, what are your plans for growing profits? Where are you going to put money? so that you know that you're going to get a better return on investment on that. Um, it's very interesting because the CEO would say, new products and services, increased sales versus marketing, enter new markets would be the top three, which by the way, is a recurring theme over our 40 years. It's interesting now that the, uh, the CMO is actually saying, no, I'm going to cut costs. That's one of the ways that I'm going to increase profit. I'm going to get a greater return on investment by driving the same sales with less money. That's number one. Number two, they're then starting to align products and services entering new markets. Um, but they're also starting to see the opportunity to invest in technology. And um, I think that's the biggest disparity, which we are explaining anecdotally as we've talked to CMOs. Cutting costs where 47% of CMOs said that would be in their top three means of driving profits versus 25% of CMOs sitting it there. It's actually tied up to the non-working budgets and the opportunity to increase automation and use AI where they're seeing and expecting a really big return on that investment and to start to deploy much more effective marketing. So it costs me the same or less to actually get better results is really, it's been the holy grail of marketers ever since you and I started. How can I improve, uh, improve my return on investment and cut costs at the same time? Because then I get a, a double whammy on my profit line.
We're discussing what marketers and CEOs believe will be the key trends in 2024. We're going to take a short break. Be right back. What does the future of work mean for your employees? How will your company navigate ESG? Will there be a global recession? At the conference board, our experts translate the latest research and economic analysis into insights and real-time problem solving for your organization. Membership at the conference board provides your team with an assortment of knowledge from economics, marketing and communications, ESG, public policy, and human capital. As a member, you'll have access to our center experts, member exclusive events, data and benchmarking tools, and peer sharing that will help you understand the present and shape the future. Consider becoming a conference board member today by visiting www.conference-board.org. Welcome back to CEO Perspectives. I'm your host, Steve Odlin from the Conference Board, and I'm joined today by Ivan Pollard, the center leader of the Marketing Communications Center at the Conference Board. Okay, so Ivan, we've got to go back now to AI and digital transformation. You mentioned this a little bit in the first part before the break, but we're seeing a recurring theme about about digital transformation and and isn't ai really you know the same you know just the next wave of digital transformation in a lot of ways what are cmos and ccos saying about their plans in 2024 so i think you're absolutely right steve ai is just the next step in a continuing digital transformation it's always been high up on the c-suite outlook for the last 10 years of people talking about that's one of the things that we've got to focus on internally, how do we get better and faster? So um, this is actually very interesting that the CMO and the CEO are expecting the same things from AI. So, you know, 91% of, of, of CEOs and 96% of CMOs are saying the most, the highest impact of, uh, that they've all chosen for the business is that it will increase efficiency and the productivity of the labor. Uh, you can go down the, the the funnel, increase efficiencies, increase effectiveness, improve marketing, increase sales and revenue. All of those, all of those I've just mentioned, are very close between the CMO and the CEO and all being selected by seven or eight or nine out of 10 of the people out there. So very much aligned. The what they're going to do with it, though, um, in, and, and what it's going to mean to their business, that actually is a good question about how they're going to implement. And we should say marketing, customer service, marketing, some sales generation, lead generation, acquiring those new customers. Even if you ask AI itself where a business should start with implementing AI, AI will tell you they're the three lead areas because um, – you know, you can see it's easy to implement. It's uh, it's uh, effective to see the the return, and there's a lot of automation in those uh, in those areas that uh, AI could do very easily. So they're leading. Other uh, areas are following. But for example, 25% of CEOs around the world say they're already adopting AI into their business, but 32% of CMOs say that that is true, and the other functions are going to follow very fast, of course. Yeah, and, and marketing communications are one of the top areas um, for deployment of, of AI. And, and really this year, it's, it's begun to boom with the new tools around generative AI. And you've, you've, you're have you really the expert at this at the conference board, Ivan, and you've put together the AI hub at the conference board and people can access that at tcb.org. I think one of the, you know, if, if I recall early on in our discussions, we were talking about uh, people being worried that AI would just supplant their jobs and that uh, marketing people would just go away. And what we've learned is that's that's really the furthest thing from the truth, that it that it's it really a tool um, as you know, it, it, in some ways, all digital transformation has been to make marketers and communicators more effective. Yeah, we always hope that digital would make our working lives more rewarding and more productive and more creative. Um, and it has for many of us. What what a person can achieve in a day now versus when I started in the 80s is massively different. It doesn't mean we're working less. It's just It just means we're doing better work. As I said, better, faster, smarter, cheaper. They're always the things that were bullied into me as uh, uh, starting out in marketing. Um, it is interesting that uh, when we asked in the C-suite outlook, CEOs and CMOs and the whole C-suite, 
which is about what the the impact of implementing AI, what are the implications for the work uh, working environment and the organizational challenges. Talent is actually right at the top. It's not about replacing talent. It's about how do I use this? How do I upskill my talent to get the best out of AI? And I think you very early on said oh, um, it's not artificial intelligence, it's augmented intelligence, and we should have called it that. Yeah. So it's a tool to be used. It, it's not a technology to be feared. Yeah, and you know, I remember when we were doing pack des package designs way back when, and you know, you need to meet with an age, you know, hire a package design company. You need would meet with the agency. You know, you drop the briefs, then you'd go and you'd, uh, you know, you meet with the creative people. You know. Three months later, you'd come back and you get these presentations. Or you'd do, I mean, it was a year-long process, and it was a million dollars that back when a million dollars was really a million dollars. And you just did an exercise recently that I thought was brilliant, and you used an AI tool, did a pack design. I, it, you, you had to put some thinking into it. It's not that it was without strategy, of course. That strategy went into it, but you were able to create a whole range of, of pack design options for a, a potential new product in a matter of, you know, minutes rather than months. It was it was phenomenal. And your prototypes, your yeah, your concepts were were better than anything I've seen. So this is uh, I think this is a prelude to how marketers can become more efficient. And that's what we're hearing from marketers. Yeah. They're really excited about the possibilities here. Yeah, without a, a, a doubt. And and we we should reiterate this notion that it's not going to get you to the end, but it's going to get you started much faster much better, much smarter. It can it, The data that's inside some of these large language models and these transformer models, um, the data inside there is stuff that we've forgotten or we can't remember or we don't access. It can access everything. So uh, yeah, the, the issue you talked about, I mean, yes, we did in a matter of minutes what used to take months, but also uh, the million dollars was reduced by a million dollars. It was free. Yeah, and, once you pay um, for the software. Yeah. Well, no, this was a freebie, Steve. It was it was Dali, <laughs> Dali three on Bing, and there you go. And it, it went backwards in history to look at the brand that we were talking about. It pulled its its data and recreated something that captured the history of the brand, but also projected it forward in a way that that could have been it. And it wasn't the idea. It wasn't the ultimate solution. But it was a, as you said, it it, it cut three months out of the process and gave you somewhere to start. What we're seeing, and this is not C-suite outlook, this is a CMO CCO meter. Eighty-three percent of CMOs and CCOs are saying that what they're going to use this for is to get started, uh, to draft yeah. the idea. But your point on the C-suite outlook that we're hearing that marketing people think that they can reduce costs, I, yeah. I think, is is linked to this notion of using these these AI and other digital tools to really jumpstart it and you know cut cut time and cut costs out of it. You know, free is good. Um, it, it doesn't really cut people though. I think, so when people hear cost savings, I don't know if our listeners do this, but m most people's minds go right to, oh, cost savings are gonna take people out of the organization. That's not what this means. And that's not what people are telling us this year. No, I, th I think you're 100% uh, right on that, Steve, because what, what, we're, what we're seeing is some of the savings that they're going to be looking for are in time and efficiency and um, and just the productivity of the team they've currently got. It is going to require, uh, you know, reskilling and upskilling. We've got over 90 percent of CEOs and CMOs saying that is their top consideration impact on the organization. But it's going to be worth it in the long run uh, because um, there'll be a paper that comes out that, uh, that that literally says in the title, as digital transformation accelerates, the humans remain critical to the CMO. So, you know, the, the training of these people to use these tools, but then importantly, to use the discretion of somebody who's close to the business, has understand what's needed, is understanding the consumer and the competition in a way that AI can't. To make sure that we can differentiate the creative outputs and just add that little bit of human magic. So the algorithms are the mathematics. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's amazing what they can do. But we still need the human in the loop to add a little bit of the magic that is going to use the math and the magic to make the money. So we've we've been talking about AI, but let's move on to you know other interesting data points that you've been able to glean from from our survey. 
Well, let's go back to this notion of, I want to go back to that point I made, 47% of CMOs say they're going to cut costs. Cutting costs does not necessarily mean headcount, to your point, Steve. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to take their whole budget down. So we asked a question in the C-suite outlook about, are you, you know, how are you planning to change your investment in over 20 line items of marketing and communications, you know, advertising, loyalty, marketing, e-commerce, whatever it may be. What was interesting is overwhelmingly the CEO, the CFO and the CMO are all intending to either keep it level or increase it. So on average of those line items, 43% of those line items will be increased by a CEO, 37% by the CMO. So investment is still going to go up. One of the things that we thought was interesting uh, to a point I made earlier on was we're still going to see customer experience and customer acquisition. They are number one and number two for where I'm going to spend my money to drive growth. And they kind of have stayed the same year on year for the CEO. They slightly dipped for the CMO. And where's the CMO going to spend the money? But by the way, also the CEO, as we said before, advertising. So we're going to get a little bit of advertising uh, popping back up um, here in terms of where the money is going to get spent, but also data and analytics. Now, pretty obviously, if you're going to do AI, you need three things. Um, and the very first that you need is brilliant data that's differentiated and is clean and it is useful. So you need the data. You need the computing power, uh, which I think is something that we're overlooking at the moment, but it's great. That's why the big players in the cloud are going to be useful. And then you need the platform, the way that you're going to access this data and, and mix it up. But that data and analytics is uh, it's the number three uh, kind of link on the where am I going to invest my money and increase investment. Number three, 65% of CMOs, 58% of CMOs are saying they're going to increase that. And that's up. 20% roughly year on year. Okay, any final thoughts, Ivan, on uh, on what CMOs and, and chief communications officers are saying they're gonna do differently for 24? Yeah, I think um, I think differently, especially when we ask CMOs and CCOs, uh, differently, communications people are gonna have to deal with the volatility that's out there. You mentioned it, Steve, you know, whether it's geopolitical or economic, there are things that are going to happen that companies are going to have to respond to internally and externally and to still keep all of their stakeholders happy. So that job, that job is vital and is strategically important to the company. When we start to think about growth and profit, the CMO is starting to have more opportunity and more tools at their dis uh, disposal to really try and innovate and unleash the creativity that is inside Yes, the data and the machine, but also the human beings. So I think what are they going to do differently? I think they're going to be asked to take a little bit more of a, 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 a kind of an adventurous uh, delve into the opportunities of the market. They're also going to be asked, that's a good thing, more adventure, more opportunity. They're also going to be asked to prove that it's working and get there quicker. All right, big changes coming for 2024 in the marketing and communications world. Ivan Pollard, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Steve. And thanks to all of you for listening in to CEO Perspectives. Every week I'll be joined by a prominent thought leader to provide insights on the issues of our time. We'll cover the leading topics in geopolitics, economics, public policy, marketing and communications, and more. Please share CEO Perspectives with your colleagues, with your friends, with your family, with anybody who's interested in what's going to happen in 2024. I'm Steve Odlin, and this series has been brought to you by the Conference Board. You have been listening to CEO Perspectives, a podcast by the Conference Board.